Good evening, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us for this Rebuild West Virginia Telethon for Flood Relief. I'm Courtney Clark. Hi there, and I'm Kevin Sizemore. Hello and welcome to In Focus. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Courtney Clark. This morning our focus is on the legislative session and I'm pleased to be joined by Senate President Bill Cole. Thanks for being here. Appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. Well, let's start by taking a look back. A West Virginia official says there are four confirmed fatalities from flooding that has devastated parts of the state. Meteorologist Travis Roberts is live in Greenbrier County this afternoon with more on that devastation. Good evening and thanks so much for joining us. We're broadcasting live for the fifth day here from Fairley at the State Fair of West Virginia. I'm Courtney Clark. And I'm Greg Carter. You know, it feels like fun, feels like fair. That's the theme for 2015 and it certainly fits the bill for this year. We've had all kinds of fun and uh, the kind of really only comes from the State Fair of West Virginia. That's right, and we've been able to do so many things this week. This is our final day of live broadcast, but there's still plenty of time for you to come out. Well, thanks for staying with us. I'm back now with a new co-host. I don't think I have to introduce him, but Billy Ray Cyrus, thanks for being here and making that trip up from Nashville. It's an honor to be with you. Welcome to WVVA's live broadcast of Virginia's 9th Congressional District Debate. Featuring Morgan Griffith and Derek Kitts with WVBA's Courtney Clark moderating. We now take you live to Tazewell Middle School. Good evening and welcome to this ninth congressional debate. I'm Courtney Clark. Thanks so much for joining us. If you're joining us from home or online, we're broadcasting live from Tazewell Middle School. Thank you all so much for having us here. Now on November 8th, residents of Southwestern Virginia will head to the polls for someone to represent the 9th District. Tonight, you'll hear from the candidates on key issues, but first, let's get to know them. We will be hitting every corner of our coverage area and around the state, from the Capitol to right here at home. We'll bring you up-to-date reports from around the region. We begin our live coverage tonight right here in Mercer County. WVVA's Joshua Bolden has been out talking with voters and election officials all day. He joins us live with more. Joshua. From churches to schools to live reports, it's a story we tell too often. Deadly shootings have become a daily topic. In tonight's special report, we talk to people on both sides of a heated debate, hearing their thoughts on the problem and the best approach to solve it. The gunman who shot and killed nine people and injured nine others at an Oregon community college last month had 14 firearms. Officials say they were all purchased legally. After the massacre, President Obama immediately demanded gun control action and was met with fierce backlash from gun rights activists. With America ranking number one in firearms per capita, we're plagued with many questions. For instance, are guns the problem and just how easy are they to purchase? Guns are not the issue, it's always the people. Miranda Walls visits her brother Dakota on the weekends at an Indiana treatment facility. He was shot in the neck during a domestic dispute last December. The shooting took the life of his friend and left him paralyzed. You don't expect that, you always think it's happening to someone else, but to someone else you are someone else. Miranda's friend Anna Brogan says recent events at home and across the country have heightened her awareness, especially on campus. We. Um especially in West Virginia and small towns like ours, don't expect something like that to happen. And it happens in big places and in tiny little country areas like ours. From a mass shooting at a quiet community college in Oregon to an officer-involved shooting in downtown Bluefield and the killing of two Roanoke, Virginia journalists on air, gunfire has sparked an outcry from people on both sides of the aisle. President Obama demanding gun control. This is a political choice that we make to allow this to happen every few months in America. An activist saying guns are not the issue, but a solution to the problem. Pretty much everything that I've read or seen in the last little bit on any of these tragedies have been in a gun-free zone, a publicized gun-free zone, which to somebody that's mentally unstable, it appears that that is a, uh, a way of knowing that they're not going to be deterred. Had anyone else had the ability to protect themselves at any of these situations, it probably would have ended uh, much differently than it has. Gun control advocates ask how differently, pointing out that most mass shooters aren't afraid of being killed, especially those suffering from mental illness, an issue that everyone agrees needs to be recognized, a responsibility that not only falls on the shoulders of health care providers, but also gun store owners, even teachers. We see students in the classrooms that aren't, acting correctly, maybe acting a little bit strange. We'd wanted them to get 
help the services that the com community and campus campuses offer. We are liable for what happens with these guns, so we have to make uh, decisions on how people act. The background check process here in Virginia begins with state and federal forms. It's then screened through NICS and Virginia State Police, a process that takes approximately 10 minutes. The results are basically instantaneous. Yet the final decision rests in the hands of the seller. You know, uh, most often it's the, under the influence of alcohol. Or somebody comes in in a mad rage, we wouldn't sell them a gun. Or somebody uh, just, just acts different. Not an easy task, holding gun sellers and buyers accountable and keeping them out of the hands of the wrong people. I was also told the background check system will kick back a person even if they have unpaid parking tickets or owe child support. But some argue more needs to be done. Again, it's a heated debate with no end in sight. To join the conversation, just search WVVA News on Facebook. Hello, and thanks so much for joining us. I'm Courtney Clark. We are broadcasting live from the 37th annual Better Living Show here at the Brush Fork Armory. Hey, Greg, as you can see behind me, everything's getting set up for Cody Wickline from Season 8 of The Voice to take the stage at 8 this evening. The music begins at 7 o'clock. We have several great performers. Wow. West Virginians never disappoint, do they? I never. have to say, 201,270. Yeah, you right met now. that challenge. Wow. Thank you all. We're going to send it back over to Amanda Barron in Studio go, B. Thank you. Inside Edition's up next, and WVVA News continues at 6. Don't forget, we're always on at WVVA.com. We'll see you in 30.